Holy smokers, guys, we've got to talk Snapchat. Snapchat today just hit its 52-week low. It just hit its 52-week low. Um, and when I took the screenshot, the stock was actually trading at $17.18, but it hit $17 even, which is its 52-week low, and I think it closed lower than what I had the screenshot here done, guys. So Snapchat, um, it's just gone down and down and down pretty much since its IPO. If you look at the chart here, the, you know, everybody wanted to get in this one. It was 24 something dollars. Then it went all the way up to 27, all the way up to 27 a few days after it went public. And then you see since there, it's been pretty much nothing but a downward trend. It came up a bit, then it dropped again. Then it came up a bit, then it dropped huge again. Then it came up a bit and now it's dropped huge again. Now we're at the 52 week low. So the question is, am I gonna buy a bunch of Snapchat shares now? Am I gonna run out there? and load up the truck. So let's go ahead and look at some things here. Now first, we gotta take some things into context. Snapchat, their IPO was at $17 per share. Now the fact that it traded over 20 the first day is just people wanting to get into it. The company felt fair value for that stock and all the Wall Street people felt fair value for Snapchat shares right now are $17 per share. The public, the public thought it was higher. So the public's what pushed that stock into the 20s and whatnot. So it's not Snapchat's fault. The, the shares are trading at what they thought they should be trading at for fair value, guys. The fact that it went up to $27, that's not Snapchat's fault. That's the public's fault that they push a stock up there that high and everybody wanted to get in left and right, guys. So the company in Wall Street, the ones that took the company public, they felt $17 was a fair price, which is exactly where it's trading at now. So it's trading at what management, the, the ones that started the business, Evan Spiegel and all those guys, thought it was, and all the Wall Street people, $17 is a fair price, just everybody wanted to get in because they thought it was just gonna blast off. So we gotta take that into context first. One other thing we gotta take into context about Snapchat here is when Facebook got went public, it was a hated stock. This stock went public at $38 a share. And next thing you knew, it was trading at $19 a share, guys. $19, it dropped 50% from where it went public at, guys. And, and so way before Snapchat, or excuse me, Facebook was the darling of Wall Street and everybody wanted to get in, whether it's the 78 year old fund manager in New York City, or whether it's the 22 year old in his basement trying to invest 500 bucks, everybody also wants a piece of Facebook nowadays. It was not like that, it was not like that, guys. So we gotta take those two things into context. One is Snapchat is trading right now where the company felt the fair value was, and two, um, Facebook had a hell of a struggle. So you could say, well, Snapchat shares would have to go down to $9 and what, uh, no, less than $9, like $8.50 per share to do exactly what Facebook did. Now, that's not saying that's gonna happen or anything like that. I'm just saying it, equivalent to what happened with Facebook. Just people forget about that either because they weren't in the market or they just conveniently forget like how much Facebook was hated and not understood when that company went public, guys. So let's look at some metrics here. This company, what I like to look at when I look at any company, and especially you know these social media companies, I look to I like to look at year over year. I don't get too tied up in the quarter by quarter stuff because things can fluctuate. So if we look at the global quarterly active daily active users, right? From Q1 2016 to Q1 2017, they basically grew 44 million new daily active users. And daily active users is the best metric in my opinion, because that means people are logging in every single day for a certain amount of time. They're logging in every single day, which is way bigger than a monthly active user, which Facebook has like went to the monthly active user thing. And it's like, okay, technically, I guess I would be a, a, a monthly active user of Facebook, right? Because maybe Maybe I go on once every three weeks or four weeks. But what the hell, I go on Snapchat every single day of my life, so what's more important, me being a daily active user or a monthly active user, without question, a daily active user. So that is my favorite metric, other than revenue and profits and all that kind of stuff, to look at with these social media companies is the daily active user number, because that tells me people log in on day in and day out, like it's an integral part of their life, like they log into their email or something like that, guys. So 
huge increase there. It slowed a little bit this, you know, this past year. We went from 144 to all the way up to 153, which is nice growth. But then 153 to 158, not huge growth, 158 to 166. And that's kind of the, the worry is, man, maybe daily active users are slowing down and yada, yada. But I still look at that year over year. It's an extremely impressive one. And then we got to look at something here. So North America and Europe, right? 71 million of the daily active users come from North America, 55 million from Europe, only 40 million from the rest of the world. Why is this? Well, as we'll see in another chart here in a second is the rest of the world is just gonna cost you a hell of a lot of money and can you bump up your statistics, right? Can you bump up your daily active users, monthly active users and make it look like you're so much more popular the same way Facebook does it really with Facebook and Instagram? But what the hell does that matter that some person in India or some person in an African village or some person you know, in some poor country is using your app? All they're doing is technically costing you more money than what you're making back from them. So from a business perspective, Though a lot of those numbers are from that Facebook reports are highly inflated by people that are going to cost Facebook way more money than what they're going to make off those people, guys. So you know, Snapchat could say, okay, let's let's just you know try to boost numbers. Let's go huge in India. Let's go huge in China. Well, I don't even know. If, I don't think they could be in China. But I'm talking some of those other big Asian markets. Let's get big in those. But if you're not gonna make back the money at the end of the day, you're just gonna end up losing more money. So why do you wanna go out and do that? So, um, you know, I, a lot of people don't understand that part of the daily active user number, monthly active user number, guys. It's very important to understand those little games that are being played here. Let's look at quarterly revenue by geography. So uh, if we look at the total revenue, $39 million Snapchat did in revenue in Q1 2016, all the way up to $150 million Q1 2017. By the way, it looks like it goes down from 166 to 150. The reason being this Q4, everybody's advertising. Q1, uh, a lot of advertisers don't advertise hardly at all or do they just cut back big time because guess what, it's not Christmas shopping season. So, And then if we look at um, the, the, the latest makeup here, so $129 million of that revenue came from North America, only 13 million from Europe, and they just opened, uh, recently just opened advertising offices in Europe, so that's gonna boost revenue huge over the next, uh, like having people there in place, uh, you know, um, calling these advertisers, calling these companies, getting them in, teaching them about the products, like that stuff is huge, guys, when you're building a business, and they've just gotten over there. And then we got about $8 million from the rest of the world, so not very much there. Quarterly average revenue per user. It went from only 32 cents back in Q1 2016 to now it is over 90 cents in Q1 2017. Huge difference there. But then look at North America. North America, you're doing a $1.81 average revenue per user versus only 24 cents in Europe. And that number is going to go up drastically over the next year or two. The rest of the world, you get about 19 cents per average user. So obviously you look at that and you say, where does a, a Snapchat want to focus it effort around? Obviously North America and then Europe and building out the advertising platform in Europe and keep pushing in Europe. And then once those are really built and those are profitable markets, then you can go and you can start going into India and pushing into some of the Asian countries that you're not going to make nearly as much money in. But, you know, we'll make your numbers look good and those kinds of things, guys. And everybody will get excited over your monthly active users and you have a billion people on your platform and all that BS, guys. Now, we look at the net loss. This company is losing a lot of money. Now, the, the net loss for March 31, 2017, that's not really a, a realistic net loss there. It says they lost $2.2 .2 billion, but almost $2 billion there was from the stock-based compensation, which is what happens when you go public, there's stock-based stock, uh, compensation, and it hits your net loss line. That's go, that happens for pretty much every company out there when they go public. So, but regardless, if you take out that number, they still lost over $200 million. This company is losing massive amounts of money right now, and they're not expected to be profitable anytime soon. They're not going to, sure as shit, not going to be profitable this year. They're not going to be profitable next year in 2018. They have a chance of maybe being profitable a little bit in 2019 with the real profits probably not coming till 2020. And that's barring that they, you know, uh, keep growing the platform and all those kinds of things. So that's something to take into account when you're thinking about Snapchat. No profitability anytime soon. 
Social platforms used by marketers in 2017. So this is a this is a survey that was done here about a bunch of different marketing companies that were done in Q1 2017. How many people were using each platform? Facebook. 94% of marketers were using Facebook. That's a great thing and a bad thing. One, it's great that a lot of you know 94% of the companies they called were using Facebook in some way. The bad side of that is. Facebook's going to have a harder and harder time growing because when you already have 94% of people <laughs> using it, you only have 6% of the marketers left to get at that point to come on your platform or you just have to hope that your current marketers use more and more money with you guys. So that is definitely um, a good thing and a bad thing there. Twitter about 68%, LinkedIn about 56%, Instagram 54%, YouTube 45%. That is unbelievable to me. Company, oh my gosh, the amount of businesses have no clue. <laughs> the ROI they could get from YouTube kills anything. You could do Facebook-wise, Twitter-wise. Believe me, I've done marketing campaigns on all the platforms for my customers before, and YouTube by far and away is the best ROI you can get anywhere and it's not even close guys so that <laughs> amazes me pinterest about 30 percent snapchat only seven percent of of marketers use snapchat snapchat has several different advertising products they've just begun rolling out a self-serve type um, advertising platform where you can do it yourself and whatnot. I tried it and it, it works pretty easily. It's phenomenal and whatnot. And that's kind of what they got to do because Facebook, they, they did the whole thing where you can boost your post, right? And you can say, okay, I want to spend $5. I want to spend $25 over the next two days or whatever. I want to spend $100 over the next three days. I want to, you know, the campaign to end at this time and those kinds of things. That is and that's awesome for Facebook. Snapchat's getting there now where, you know, Snapchat doesn't have to come get customers. Customers come to Snapchat and they can seamlessly say, oh, I can boost this post. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I can, uh, you know, um, X out this area here and have my have my advertisement go for anybody that's logs on to Snapchat right here. Those kinds of things. Big time, guys. Let's look at some valuation metrics here. Market cap of around $20 billion. Obviously, they have no PE ratio because the company is not profitable and I don't expect to be profitable anytime soon. So you're basically, if you're buying Snapchat, you're going to pay a $20 billion valuation for that company, right? Well, you look here and, and we can say Facebook, which Facebook is made up of really the Facebook platform, right? Instagram, WhatsApp, um, two of those platforms have over a billion users. Another one's going to be approaching it soon. So... They got a $434 billion and obviously they'll get a higher, a higher multiple, a higher valuation because they are actually making money hand over fist right now. Snapchat's losing money. So you can say, well, if Snapchat isn't as big as Instagram, it's not as big as Facebook, it's not as big as WhatsApp, well, um, you know, what should that be valued at? And I could say, probably somewhere around where it's at now. That's probably what the company is truly worth right now at the moment, even though they're not profitable because you can just say, well, the numbers are adding up. They had like 296% revenue growth. They have billions of dollars in cash on the balance sheet. So you can say that's probably what this company's worth. Now, will I be loading up on shares? Will I be going out and buying Snapchat? Not quite yet, not quite yet. Reason being is I think I've just matured in my investing career and I've gotten in a lot of stocks too soon. When they're dropping and they're dropping, a lot of times I like to catch that falling knife and I'm gonna let this one fall a little bit more before I go and jump in and add shares. I absolutely, absolutely love Snapchat for the next five to 10 years. I believe the platform is phenomenal. I believe the, the technology they have, I believe the management's very good. I can tell you, audience retention is amazing. I get, uh, when I post a Snapchat, Almost 50% or probably over 50% of the people that actually follow me on Snapchat actually open my posts and look at them. That is ridiculous audience retention. Like no other platform has anything that even touches that. Like Facebook, Instagram, you can't get 50% of the people to click on your video or look at whatever you're doing. I wish I could have it on this. If I had that shit on YouTube, I would be making tens of thousands of dollars from YouTube ads every month. Like it would be extraordinary if I could get over 50% of the subscribers on my channel to watch every single one of my videos. Like I would need, I would get like 25,000 views a video, like ridiculous numbers for seven days a week. It would be silly money. So a uh, Snapchat has phenomenal audience retention. It's a great platform. I absolutely believe it in the next five to 10 years. I just don't want to jump in this one too soon when things are still falling and you know the, the disbelief is still coming and the sellers are selling more and more. I just don't want to jump in this one too soon. 
However, I love this company for the long term and I definitely want to add a big position. I just not quite ready to do it right now. And uh, maybe it drops a bunch more between now and the four stocks to buy in July video. And maybe it makes a, a guest appearance on that. We'll just have to see you guys. Not promising anything, but uh, very interested. Love the long term story and we'll see what happens in the long term, guys. So hope you enjoyed this today. Book is linked in the description. If you just came across this channel, you may want to subscribe. We talk personal finance in the channel. We talk entrepreneurship. I'm an actual business owner. I give away so many business tips. We talk stock market investing more than anything. Thank you for watching guys and have a great day.